Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you. All right, so I am Nathan Powai. I uh, am in an echoey room, so I, my apologies for that. Hopefully you can understand it. Um, so I am located in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I help supervise early morning teachers, in, basically in the eastern half of North Carolina. That's where, where I'm at, from Raleigh, more or less over to the coast here. So today, we're going to talk about like, creating an environment um, of acceptance and respect with the idea that that will help us to, to teach more effectively and bring those that we minister to to the Savior. So just thinking about this idea, I want you to brainstorm with me for just a second. Just take a second and think about some of your favorite people to be around. And, and there is no real expectation from me on this. Just I want you to just think about some people that you enjoy their company, you enjoy being around. And then I'm just going to call on a couple of you um, to, to share, if you will, here. So um, let me see. Julie, would you mind telling me about one of your favorite people in the world? Um, that would probably be my best friend, Angela. Okay. Um, she, I tend to have a very serious demeanor and she allows me to be silly. Right. I like that. Thank you. Um, Kim, what about you? Would you mind sharing with us one of your favorite human beings? My sister, Mary, she is one of my favorites. Um, what are you like when you're around? Did you say Mary? Yeah, it's short for Meredith, though. It's not Mary like Mother of Jesus. But right. anyway, me, all right. Um, I love her because when we are together, it is it is a little ridiculous, but we can also, I mean, share, I mean, really heavy stuff. And uh, and it's, it's edifying is what it is. I just, I always... It doesn't matter if it was silly or really hard. I always feel better after I talk to her. Mm, I like that. I like that. What we found um, over and over, not just in the church, but in social science and business and other things like that, that when we're able to create real relationships with individuals, it helps reduce their fear and increase confidence. Um, like when you're around somebody that that you like, um, you're more open and you're more willing to share your, your, uh, your, you talked, both of you talked about, well, you talked about being silly, right? Being more open in that way. But you also talked about um, sharing profound things, Kim, at least. And that's kind of what we're going for here in, in seminary, more or less. We want to create an environment where they feel safe enough to open up about real things so that we can help them out in that regard. And so we have a couple of ideas that, that may help you, you move in this direction. Now, one idea is really simple, and it may be something that you try out at the beginning of the year, and that's to spend a little portion of your class just having fun and laughing with your class. Now, some of you are like, what does this dude expect me to do? Do you uh, like get up there and tell jokes? Like I'm, some of you are like, I'm not a stand-up comedian. I'm not going to make them laugh. That's not the way I, we're going to do it. But one thing you may consider is just doing something that has the purpose of engaging them and opening them up, but isn't necessarily, I don't know, spiritual per se right off the bat. Here's what I'm meaning. You take five minutes at the beginning of the class and just play simple parlor games like you have played before. Like Pictionary, Charades, or even like Do Do Do. Have you ever played Do Do Do? Uh -huh. So what you do is you like just have a list of Disney songs and somebody has to come up and they gotta sing the Disney song, but they can only use the words Do Do Do. So for example, I will do it because I'm not gonna make any of you do it right now, but... Do 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 and they get up there and they just have to go do 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 and they know what it is and they're like come on guys and everybody's like I don't know what you're talking about and then you you can go on for a while and the point is just to be silly to be with them and engage them you don't want to take 45 minutes on it 
But if you take five minutes and then maybe the next day you do some fun charades or Pictionary or something like that. The idea is just in a simple way to laugh together with the end goal of being able to create an environment where they feel safe, where they feel linked to one another and built to one another. And, and there's kind of no end to these sorts of games, minute to win it games or stuff like that. And you don't have to do them all the time, but every once in a while when you feel like they're, they're lagging a little bit, maybe you get in there a couple months and you're like, we need a boost, we need to reconnect. You just take five quick minutes and you laugh together at something uh, well. And by the way, I was singing, oh, I just can't wait to be king. Really poorly, Thank right? You. I was going to just not be able to let that go until... Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. <laughs> wow. So... Unrecognizable. The idea is just to have fun, okay? So, so one idea is just to create these moments where together we have fun and we engage with one another. Sometimes we make a mistake by trying to be too serious with them too quickly. Meaning, um, we haven't developed relationships with them that allow them to open up. There's a reason why at girls camp testimony meeting isn't till like the second to last day. We want to give them some time to engage with one another, laugh with one another. We do silly skits at the girls camp before we have that testimony meeting. Um, and so this is kind of like some groundwork or foundation to move us to that point. Um, where they can feel open. Does that make sense with everybody? Any questions on that? Um, and then another thing that we can do to foster an environment is just simply to notice them. Um, when we greet them, even when they're sleepy and grumpy, um, if we can just comment on something about them, um, just like, hey, I'm, I see your shirt, right? Tell me about that. Like you don't even have to know anything about it. They have a Naruto shirt on and you're like, what on earth is that? You ask them about it and they will go deep into the world of anime and you're like, tell me more. <laughs> it just gives you a hook. You don't have to even like anime. You don't have to like video games. You don't have to be into what they're into. But if you'll notice it and allow them to talk about themselves a little bit, it opens up a door for, for them to trust you. Just think about this, like, have you ever had um, a relationship built in your life because you had a, some sort of common bond, right? And it doesn't really matter what it is. Sometimes the common bond is you just go to church. Like, we, we just moved to this area and shortly thereafter trusted complete strangers with our 11-year-old daughter because we had this common bond of the church, right? It opens up a connection. And so simply noticing things that they are into, having quick conversations at the beginning of the end, uh, end of class. And, and a lot of times this can happen as they come into class or as they leave class. And you can just, you don't have to do everybody every day. Maybe you choose, hey, I'm gonna talk to this one student today and just, just talk to them for a second. And it will take, fortunately you have weeks with them, right? But you do this on a consistent enough basis, you, they're going to become really close with you and you to them and you're going to and sincerely care. It's not going to be something you got to think about. You're just going to know about what they, they like and what they know. So let's do this real quick. If you have something to write with or write on, I want you to think about some of the kids you know in your ward that are going to be in your class. Maybe you don't know them well, um, but I want you to write down any things you have noticed about them already, okay? Um, and running the whole gambit of school, sports, interests, clothing, um, hair color, it doesn't even matter. Think about at least one student and write something you have noticed about them already. What are some things you know about them already? come to an end of your sentence and I'm going to invite you to continue this when we are done already I saw that some many of you were already had some things like I know this about this guy I know this about this guy um, 
And Tara Lynn, I don't know if you introduced yourself. Am I saying it right? All right, so Tara Lynn, would you mind telling us just one student that came to mind and just one thing that you have noticed about them just in your interactions already? Does my mic work? Can you hear me yes. okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so I'm new and I haven't taught yet. Mm -hmm. So I have two of my own kids and I don't know many of the other kids, but I do know one student. His name is um, Chandler and he's the son of the violin teacher as well. So I know that he's just a little bit creative in other ways. And so... Does he play the violin also or no? I, he is not. Okay. Well, good. That's what we're talking about. Perfect. Hey, just be open to it. Don't put too much stress on, on yourself here, but just be real, be authentic, be interested. And as you notice um, them, uh, you'll, you'll see those things start to, to happen there. So have fun and begin to notice and just have authentic conversations with them about the things you notice will help. Finally, and maybe most importantly, the thing we can do to create a, a sense of belonging here it is to let them know that they are part of God's family. Um, through spirit, son and daughtership, through covenant, they've been born again. Almost every single member of your class has been born again in the covenant of Jesus Christ and saved and redeemed by Jesus Christ. Elder Irene says it this way, of all the help we can give these young people, the greatest will be to let them feel our confidence that they are on the path home to God, that they can make it. When they share with us what they are doing and feeling, we must ourselves have qualified for the Spirit. Then they will feel in our praise and our smiles the approval of God. Just the more we can root uh, every lesson in this idea that, that we are children of God, redeemed by Jesus Christ, united in the cause of Christ, gathered to the cause of Christ, um, we can lock in an, on an identity that is more concrete, grounded, and solid than any other identity available to them. Uh, and it can be something we come back to again and again and again. Now, that being said, being united in this cause does not mean that we are all the same, as you well know, but sometimes they don't quite get that. Sometimes they feel like if we're all... If we're all disciples of Jesus Christ, we're all going to look the same, act the same, talk the same, think the same. But we bring a diversity of skills and talents. And, and Paul commented on this, as you know, like, we need feet, we need hands, we need lungs, we need all parts of the body to perform well. But maybe you think of it this way. Um, once upon a time, there was, was a soccer goalie. Oh, he was an exceptional soccer goalie. Thin athletic, tall, and just the reaction time out of control. And he threw himself into being a goalie like you wouldn't believe. Like he would just throw himself with reckless abandon and sometimes the ball would just crease off the very tip of his finger and he would be like save the goal, save the game. He was able to see the whole field and direct them where, where to go. But it came to pass that goalies don't get much glory. Cheerleaders don't go to the game for goalies. It's not the goalies who rip off their shirts in celebration and run around the field like crazy people. It's the guys who score goals. And so our goalie decided that he needed a different role. And so he would every play run down the field to be his striker position, abandoning the goal. And he would throw himself into scoring goals with the same reckless abandon. He threw himself into uh, preventing goals and it came to pass that they lost every game of the season because there was no one to stop the opposing balls. Here's what we need them to understand, is that the role they play in the kingdom of God and in your classroom is valuable. And the perspectives they bring to the, 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 the classroom are valuable. What they bring as a goalie, as a, a metaphorical goalie, right? As a defenseman, as an attacks person, is very, very valuable. And so one thing we may do as we prepare our lessons is recognize that somebody's gonna see the gospel in a different way than we see it. 
They come sometimes from a different generation. They come sometimes from a different location, a different family circumstance. Um, and so one question you may consider asking yourself as you prepare your lesson to bring this out of them is what experiences do I know that they have had that may help them see this concept differently than me? What experiences have they had that may bring a different perspective than my own? I know I said it differently both times, but just put it in your own words there. Just be thinking about that, that idea. So again, let's just take a second and um, maybe you're new or maybe you're, you're old to this, but of those you know, even your own children in some instances, what experiences have they had that may lead them to see things differently than you? I want you to choose one student, if you can think of one, one individual in your ward, and think about how their experience so far is a little different from you. And I want you to write down a couple of notes right now that may inform their perspective. So just a couple of ideas, a couple of notes. Now here's my follow-up question for you. Thinking about their different perspective, how is that perspective valuable to your future classroom? I'm thinking of them as a goalie to, to you being a striker, however you want to conceptualize this. With what you wrote down, how do you see that adding to, to the gospel, adding to the experience? Any thoughts? This is open to anybody right here. But as you considered your individual and their experience, why do you think it's valuable that they're brought in here? Um, we've got a couple of kids who um, are in a large family with several adopted kids, and um, they're big soccer players. So this, this particular example <laughs> runs through with our kids. Um, but one of their sisters has had um, a heart condition, and so she's had a lot of surgeries and procedures. And especially during COVID, the whole family was on lockdown to protect her, it, even when the rest of us were giving up masks and everything. And so these kids had to sacrifice their mobility, their time with friends, a lot of things that they would be doing at this age um, to protect their sister. And so they bring that experience of sacrifice into the class. Dude, I, I'm, I'm already anticipating you being able to ask them and the rich spirit that will bring, right? Like, yeah, that's good stuff. And, and, and uh, part of what I want you to see is as you do this in your planning, it, it makes these authentic conversations happen in, in a very real and natural way. And it helps that you plan it and thought about it a little bit. That's awesome. Anybody else have any thoughts come to them when they were thinking about some of their future students and the perspective they might bring, the value they might bring? Any other thoughts? I have a, one of my young women. She's a middle child of a large family. So number one, she's middle child. Father's the bishop. Her mother used to be the young women's president. Her older siblings, which I have also taught in seminary, very vocal, very outspoken, uh, very dynamic. Lydia is very quiet. Getting her to say hello sometimes is an effort. She sits back. I'm not a middle child, but I was for a short time with my family dynamics. A middle child tends to sit back and watch what everybody else is doing. If you're not the older child who everybody you know, relies on, you're not the younger child, you're not the baby that everybody oohs and awes over, you're the middle child. And that and I have some middle child children, of course. <laughs> and so I know that she has a lot inside of her, and I know that she has a lot to share. But what I have to do is make her feel comfortable enough right. that she will share that. Well, because can, she's an observer. Can I just say what you have just said is one way to draw her out. 
where you just yeah. said, I know you have sat there and you have observed. I've seen you observe. And when you, you comment on the fact that you've noticed her notice, then you say, yeah, so talk to me. What have you noticed? Give me some of that expertise that you have seen. Ooh, ooh, you got some good stuff coming already. That's good. <laughs> Now tell me this, we've talked about three things, just having fun, we've talked about noticing them, and we've talked about um, being, how do you say, very deliberate in how we carefully, how we prepare to bring their different perspectives, right? Those are the three things we've talked about. As you've thought about this, what impressions have you had from the Holy Ghost about moving forward with your classroom? What sort of ideas, themes, what things are standing out to you? It could be something we said, or it could be just inspiration that has come from the Holy Ghost. Uh, any thoughts here as we've had this conversation? I always have several thoughts. <laughs> I, I, you know, humor is uh, a blessing. It, it is a skill. And when you're working with teenagers, you have... Being able to bring out humor. Sometimes you don't have to bring it out. I mean, it's just there because. Right. And, but just being it. willing to laugh at it, right? Laugh. And be able to laugh at yourself. I suffered a stroke a few years ago. And so they have seen what I was like before the stroke. And they have seen what I'm like after the stroke. And there are times when it's just funny because I, I have a, one of my class um, in the presidency, I have a scribe. Because every once in a while, if I have to write a lot on the board, I have to use my opposite hand. The side that was paralyzed was my dominant side. So I have to learn to write with my right hand. And every once in a while, I write things backwards, and I hear a giggle, and I'll say, oh, you get up here and do it. Then. <laughs> so I have a scribe, right, that if I'm having to write a lot, I have one of them get up there and do all the writing for me. But I, lo I love that idea of laughing. Watch though. adults laugh at themselves they can laugh at themselves and not get so caught up in the seriousness and uh, be able to feel the spirit then and not feel right, self-conscious. Right. I think um, Gordon B. Hinckley, President Monson, masters of, of yeah. that sort of idea there. Um, Chris, uh, I don't know if you have any thoughts on this. Um, will, do you have any um, impressions, any thoughts as we've been talking today? And it doesn't have to be profound. Oh, I think you're still muted, Chris. I can't hear you. I'm new, so... No, I, that's totally I, okay. Any thoughts, though, that the Holy Ghost has given you? I don't know these kids, but um, I have taken it upon myself to go individually because the team teacher did not want to do that, so she already knows them. And... Um, so I just took it upon myself to do it. And I've just seen two as I met all the girls in class. And from what I've seen, um, I had a wonderful conversation with a couple boys and they are, um, they were feeling very isolated because they live out in the country. So I was um, gonna use that in a lesson mm. on what, uh, either when you're the only one um, and there's nobody around or, or you know, something. I was just going to do that. something with it. Because you can I do a whole flex that. day on that. Yeah. What I did, you went out on me. What did you say? You could do a whole flex day on that topic. So how do I, how would I do that? So basically in your, your pacing chart, your, your teaching schedule, um, occasionally there will be a day that says flex and that means you have time okay. to catch up or you time to do a lesson very particular to your needs and so um, Julie's just suggesting that you could use a day like that almost a whole day talking about that concept oh okay um, and, and just again can I, I point out like you just noticed you had a real conversation with them and then making plans to draw in their expertise on that like that's real. That's powerful. Um, and, and, and I hope you're noticing too that this is not going to have to be anything crazy or out of your range. You're, you're all normal human beings who have had normal conversations with real people, right? You just notice them 
and, and then utilize that perspective as you go through. I, I love that. Leah? I think as a, as a teacher, you have the opportunity to encourage or squash some of the things that happen naturally. Um, so one of the things that has happened naturally in our class is the kids have started giving each other nicknames um, okay. out of the scriptures or out of some topic. Um, and when it's appropriate, I let it stand. <laughs> Obviously, I don't want anybody to feel picked on. But we have a Moses, we have a King Arthur, we've got, you know, some of these, and it, but it's a bonding thing between the kids because it's this little secret thing they've got when right. they see each other on That's Sunday good. or in the hall or whatever. It's good, man. It's good. Leah, what do, what do you got for us? Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, one of the most powerful things we did, it was during, during um, Doctor and Covenant's um, study, and we just kind of sent out a rant, like a, a survey of things that kids were struggling with, concerns they had. It was anonymous, um, but we brought it back and displayed the results for the class, and it was so powerful for them to realize there was not one category. I'm talking like, you know, severe things, depression, anxiety, thoughts of suicide, you know, I mean, things about feeling alone at church, feeling alone at school, all kinds of categories, but there was not one category where one person was alone, that there was only one person who felt that way, and it was, it was helpful to us as teachers because we got a really inside view of the things that the kids were struggling with um, in, a, in a way that was still anonymous where they felt they had privacy, but then we could use that information to, to inform our lessons better and, and, you know, reach out to them on those specific issues. Right. It, it was very helpful to us. I love that. That's a great tool. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Good job. Okay. <clears throat> we have a, a, a student coming up that's got almost crippling anxiety. That's their heart. About everything. And uh, not quite sure how to handle it. Anybody have any suggestions? And he's big, he's overweight, he's tall, he's... Kim, go ahead um, and share. Yeah, I would say uh, when I was in Young Women, we, we had a young woman that was like that, and actually uh, a young man at the same time. And I noticed during some of our combined activities, sometimes the worst thing you could do is try to include them and draw them out. You really need to give them an opportunity to feel in control of when they want to engage or not, or they will be so, I mean, your efforts to make them feel welcome will scare them away, depending on how severe it is. I would really pray for the spirit and knowing when, when to reach out and, and when to just give them their space. Can I say something about that? Yeah. Um, when you're obese like that, because I've, I've dealt with that for years, um, uh, people are treated um, uh, invisibly. And so if you call on somebody who hasn't, um, or acknowledge somebody who hasn't, um, and you know they have this anxiety, hasn't um, volunteered to do anything or, or come forward with, um, hi, how are you type thing, then um, uh, my way of, of what I've seen with my experience is welcome to our class. You do everything the same with everybody because they are watching you. And welcome, welcome to the class. Please find a place down and then let them have their space as you said um the lady before me said um let them have their space because it's enough that they showed up if they have that much anxiety they showed up and um maybe when they leave oh i'm so glad you came and um please come again and leave it at that you know, don't gush over them or don't ignore them, but um, be matter of fact. And I would never call on somebody with anxiety or anything until later on. And then I would give them two weeks to prepare something. And it would be something written out that not anything they have to figure out in their head or be called on the spot. 
Thank just you, that, and then Good. pray, pray, pray for them. Wonderful. Thank a you. tool like menti.com or something where they've got an, an anonymous electronic, um, you know, board is, is useful too in that situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. He's our, he's our grandson. Yeah. And, uh, we will, You're be, his dad be, will drop him off and we'll bring him home. You'll be well positioned here. You call Just let him observe. Yeah. yeah. That is so great. What, I mean, maybe that's one reason that you were called. Maybe he wouldn't go if you weren't the teachers. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Tara Can I add to that also? Um, cause I deal with my own kids who have some um, anxiety and mental health issues, but having fostering some kind of relationship with another student um, might help so that they feel that safety uh, fostering what a, 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 a friendship with student. another peer oh, okay. um, in the class could help just make them feel um, safe and comfortable in the environment which might be new and different for them can I ask a question have, have any of you read the book wonder um, yeah. this is who's severely handicapped and the either a teacher or a principal before school find him a, a buddy if you assign I don't know if you would do something like that in seminary sign everybody a buddy that they normally don't hang with and then that's the person they call if they miss an assignment or um uh you can put them in groups you know okay this is time because they can sit where they want is evidently what the lady who I team teach with said you don't um because I was counsel or taught in this thing that you move kids around or stuff. And she said, no, that doesn't work. So she says, we let them sit where they want. So you may do something like that and then break kids into groups and okay, everybody get with your buddy and go in group A or go in group B. You know, I, is that, do you think that's a good idea or not? Yeah. Because in wonder he was severely okay. handicapped and that kid was a very beloved and kind hearted kid. And, um, they became very best friends and they each taught each other something. Right. Um, we have three kids. We will have three kids in our class if it stays the way it is. And one of the three is his sister. So we have a little bit of a different <laughs> right. situation. Um, one of the things we've done with some of the, some anxiety behaviors and, and is, is most of the time they will have something that comforts them. And so we've allowed that to become normal in the class. So we've got a couple of kids that draw. We've got one who will sometimes get up and pace. And so the kids have learned not to react. It's just, it's just what is. Your sisters and brother, um, I love how the Holy Ghost is working on you already. Look at this, like you're being taught, okay? You're being prepared, you're being helped. This is good. So. As we conclude, I want you to continue to write down some of these thoughts and impressions you're having about how to arrange your class and structure your class to foster this safe environment. And I'd encourage you to think upon the, these concepts of how you can help them feel like they're part of God's team right here, right? Uh, how you can help them know that their perspective is valued within your classroom. Um, think about how you will strategically notice them, greet them, things like that. And, and I would, I would honestly encourage you to plan out some fun. Um, like um, Karen said, laughter is, is magic for, for helping bind people together. So just consider those ideas as you move forward and I, I promise you that, that God will teach you. You're the right person right now. You're in the right place. Sometimes it can feel overwhelming. That's just Satan. Ninja kick him in the sternum and let's move on. And just trust God, okay? Just trust that you're in the right spot. He has your back and he'll help you out. And I'll leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for being here, friends. We'll go ahead and end the meeting and come to the next one. We'll hang out. See you, Grace, friends. Grace, wait.